Einstein made this prediction, as you say, 100 years ago. But for decades, actually, it remained a kind of mathematical curiosity. People weren't sure that this prediction of gravitational waves had any real physical meaning, that it was a, an effect we could detect. And it took until the 1960s before people thought that this was maybe something that was real, that we could actually try and detect, try and sense, and they've taken the following decades in between to get to the point that we are now. And one scientist put it that the, the sound of space has changed. I mean, through that sound now, yes. do we get the history of the Big Bang? Do you, do you buy that? Not yet, but that's a, a goal for us in future. What we've started to be able to do is to listen to the gravitational history of our universe. We've started to hear sounds from our local universe, mm. from black holes, as we heard today, spiralling into collide. And so far, we can listen to those within a certain volume of our local universe. What we'd like to do is make our detectors even more sensitive to, to sense further out into the universe. The further out we go, the further back in time we can sense. And eventually, if we can make our detectors sensitive enough, we'd like to reach back to gravitational signals potentially coming from the Big Bang. God, it's, it's extraordinary that. Does, does this tie in with Einstein's theory of relativity? Does it make sense of that? Does it prove it? Today, today's result is a fantastic confirmation of Einstein's theory of general relativity. Everything we detected today fits with general relativity and that is in some ways fabulous. It's a fabulous confirmation of Einstein's prediction. But we know that general relativity being a fabulous theory, it still doesn't tell us everything, the full story of, of all the forces that govern our universe. So it's, in some ways it's fabulous. It's a fabulous confirmation of general mm -hmm. relativity, but still there are boundaries to push. So does it disturb things that scientists had thought were set in stone? I mean, are there, has it created more problems for you when you step back? I don't think it's created more problems for us. It's given us a new tool, a tool that we really didn't have before to study as we, as we heard the dark side of our universe because pretty much everything we know so far we've got by going out and turning our telescopes up, sensing the light that we can mm. see. So it's all been done with light and all been done visually? Light and all its different spectrums, so X-rays, mm. gamma rays, they're all part of the spectrum of light. What does this do to, to gravity and to our understanding of gravity now, which has always been the most sort of mysterious force, if I can call it that? It, it gives us a new tool to try and understand where our our, our limits of Einstein's theory stop mm. because for the very first time we've got objects that have the, the strongest gravity that we can think of. Black holes of course are called black because not even light can escape mm. them and two black holes merging, colliding as we saw today is gravity in its strongest form and we've just started to be able to see what's happening and, and those limits of the strongest gravity we can think of. We got our first signal today, just our, our first hint that we heard about. But to study those systems, it will push our understanding of general relativity to the limits and test really what we know. Professor Owen, great to have you in. Thank you very much indeed.